Wintertime fishing is one of my favorite times of year to be on the water. And in today's video, I'm going to break down the basics of wintertime smallmouth fishing to teach you everything you need to know to go catch fish this wintertime. Let's dive into this thing. For me, wintertime fishing is one of the best times of year to be on the water. No one else is out there and it can be one of the best times of year to catch a bunch of fish. But if you don't know where to start and you don't know the basics of wintertime smallmouth movements, it can be very, very challenging. So in today's video, I'm gonna break down the basics, everything you need to know about catching wintertime smallmouth to help you catch more fish. Now, if you guys don't know who I am, my name is Benjamin Nowak, and this channel is dedicated to taking you on fishing trips, teaching you fishing tips, and sharing with you my experiences on the water. So if you guys enjoy that style of content, please consider subscribing to the channel and growing this community, and it means the world to me. Thank you for taking your time out of your day to watch this video. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is defining wintertime smallmouth fishing and the basics of wintertime smallmouth movements. So for me, wintertime fishing is anytime the water temp falls below 50 degrees. Now, I don't care where you guys are located, if it's in Alabama, Michigan, Minnesota, anywhere that you guys have smallmouth bass, wintertime fishing for me begins when that water temp falls below 50 degrees. These fish are gonna become relatively inactive. They can become grouped up in these deeper water locations. And because their metabolism is slowing, they're going to bite in smaller periods throughout the day. Especially during these colder water months, bite windows become critically important. You need to pay attention to these major and minor feed windows and be on your best areas when you have those bite windows. And the easiest way to figure out when a bite window is is by looking at Bassmaster Magazine or Bass Forecast or any of these fishing apps that give you your major and minor feed windows and be on your best locations when it tells you those fish are going to be feeding. It seems silly. I was never a believer until the past couple of seasons. I've seen it work. Pay attention to those major minor feeds, especially during the cold water periods. It's going to help you catch more fish. One of the things that I've noticed is a difference between northern smallmouth and southern smallmouth is that our northern bass tend to congregate in massive schools, especially on these northern bodies of water. I think the reason for that is that that water fluctuates so much and they get an ice cap over their head, they really hunker down in the deepest portion of the lake and they all hang out together, as opposed to southern bodies of water where these fish are going to get into small pods, five, six, 10 fish pods instead of these massive schools. You're gonna kinda have to pay attention to the small details so you can pattern those fish around your body of water instead of up here in the north where these fish are going to be on one one spot on your lake and you can really fish around all day and never get bit but when you land on that school you can catch so many fish that it's incredible some of the best fishing you've ever had so the real difference here is that down south you're gonna have to pay attention to the small details to pattern these fish and up here in the north you're gonna have to pay attention to the small details to locate that school of bass this winter time now that we've talked about the basic smallmouth movements during the winter time let's talk about the three areas that I'm looking for bass this time of year the first one is deep water with stable conditions. Especially during the winter time, you have huge fluctuations in the weather outside. Yesterday it was 60 degrees, tomorrow it's gonna to be 40 degrees, it's gonna be 20 degrees on Saturday. You have these giant fluctuations in the weather, but that deep water is gonna remain really stable. These fish aren't going to be susceptible to the varying weather conditions that you're facing. So finding those deep locations in your body of water could be a critical key to locating where these bass are on your lakes. Consideration number two is finding areas that are going to heat up faster or hold heat longer. One of the things my buddy Alex Rudd always talks about is finding those areas that will heat up really fast, especially down in Tennessee. Finding that shale rock, that darker rock bottom that is going to heat up faster. Those are going to be some of the best areas to locate these fish that are pushing up into the shallow water, even during the winter time. Because as much as I want to talk about fishing deep water for wintertime smallmouth, there's going to be a group of fish that will still feed and live in that shallow water. So finding areas that heat up faster can be really, really key. Another key is going to be finding areas that hold heat longer. Last living grass patches or wood, porous pieces of wood that hold heat longer are going to attract forage and therefore attract bass. So finding areas that will heat up faster or hold heat longer can be great locations to look even in shallow water during the winter time. And point number three is going to be finding forage or areas where bass can ambush bait really effectively. This is something I learned when I was fishing down at Dale Hollow this year. One of the most predominant patterns, especially during the winter time, is locating these massive schools of bait fish and finding the bass that are living below that bait feeding on them when those bite windows become present. So locating these giant schools of bait can be a really, really effective pattern 
especially if you live on those southern bodies of water or areas or bodies of water where you have these giant massive bait balls this time of year. Because even though there's a group of fish that will hunker tight to the bottom, there's also going to be a population of bass that will suspend under the bait and follow that bait around all winter long. So if you can locate those big pods of bait fish or the forage that those bass are keying on or those ambush points where these bass are going to feed on that bait, you can typically locate the fish during the winter time. So pay attention to those deep water areas that are gonna remain stable, those heat holding areas or areas that will heat up faster and areas where that forage is or ambush points for these bass to feed effectively on that forage when it swims by. Now we've started to talk about the basics of the things that I'm looking for for these bass. Now I'm gonna give you some keys to look for when you're at home looking at your lake maps to locate these fish. So the first area that I'm gonna look for when I'm looking at my lake maps are points or deep water flats with easy access to shallow water. So what I mean by that are these long tapering points that do have some sort of steep break on them. They're gonna follow along that steep break as their highway, but they can use that as easy access into shallow water if they decide to become aggressive and feed up on the shallow flat. The same thing with that point, with that steep drop, they can use that as like a wall to feed against, or they can use it to slide up quickly onto that shallow flat and really feed aggressively. The other key here in really finding the spot on the spot is about locating the isolated pieces of cover down there on bottom or those isolated bottom transitions where these fish can feed aggressively. What I believe is that they sit sort of just randomly on the flat, but when they become aggressive and active and they really want to feed, they'll move up on that bottom composition change or on that piece of isolated cover and they'll feed aggressively in these really small areas. So locating that piece of cover, locating that bottom transition is where these fish are gonna become active, really set up in big numbers and feed aggressively. Now, if you guys are river or reservoir fishermen, another great spot to look is those areas of heavy current flow. That heavy current is going to keep that water stable, moving, oxygenated, but it's also going to provide fish easy access to forage as it blows or swims by. I've done this a little bit fishing the river by my house this time of year, is looking for those areas where that current's flowing really heavy and finding the break or the seam and locating those fish that are sitting in that slack or slower moving water feeding on the forage as it passes by. Another place that is really well known for this is down south in Tennessee, Alabama, the TVA system. Because when you're fishing those areas, when you see it on Pickwick, when you see Mikey Balls do it, Caleb Bell, Alex Rudd, these guys that are fishing these southern bodies of water, they're fishing those tail races where that water is flowing in from one lake to another. That really heavy current flow, these bass are sitting behind isolated boulders and cover down on bottom or along the seams feeding on that current as it pushes by. It not only provides them really oxygenated, fresh water, stable water conditions, but it also provides them really easy access to that food as it comes by their heads. So fishing these faster, heavier current flow areas can be a very good location to look for these fish during the cold weather months. And number three, I've mentioned it pretty much at all of these points, is isolated pieces of cover and structure. Obviously, ambush points are good any time of year, but especially during the winter time, if a fish is on last living grass or on a piece of wood, he's there really just to feed. He's just hanging out there to wait for forage to come by to feed on. If those fish are on those isolated pieces of cover, they're really only there to feed. So locating these isolated pieces of cover wood in the water, last living grass, big boulder patches. If there are fish there, they're there to feed and it's a great spot to get a lot of bites. So don't overlook these areas, especially when you're out looking for wintertime smallmouth because it can be really, really productive locations to catch a bunch of as well as giant fish. And then the final point I wanna make about wintertime fishing and really should be a priority any time of year that you're on the water is with regards to safety. Now I wear a PFD anytime I'm on the water just in case something happens, but especially during the winter time when that water temp is below 50 degrees, the weather outside is really nasty. Having a PFD on a life jacket is really, really critical because if you fall into that cold water, chances are you're gonna seize up, lock up, and it's gonna become really, really hard to swim. I don't care how good of a swimmer you are, it's gonna become very, very difficult to swim. It's gonna become hard to pull yourself out of the water. So having a PFD on, some sort of life jacket is very, very critical. Also up here in the north, we have these winter uh, ice fishing suits. And most of these suits that are sold now are actually flotation suits. So that alone is not really enough. I will always wear my PFD, but wearing a flotation suit or some sort of warm suit when you're out fishing is really, really important. I also keep a spare change of clothes in my boat at all times during the winter time. 
if I fall in or I get wet, the first thing I want to do is change those clothes down, change into something dry and warm so I can keep my core heat as high as I possibly can. If you get wet and your core temp starts to fall, I don't care how warm your clothing is, you're going to freeze from the inside out. So really during the winter time, but all year long, make safety a priority. It's a small investment if it's gonna save your life at the end of the day. And this is not a sales pitch. I wear striker ice bibs and a striker ice jacket because they float. I wear an onyx jacket because they float. All this stuff is meant to keep me safe, keep me warm, and keep me comfortable which is another thing when you're out there on the water. So pick up good clothing. It's going to keep you safe, warm, dry this winter time when you're out there chasing these big smallmouth bass. So that's really my wintertime breakdown. I'm also going to have a video linked down in the description below. You can click on it right here talking about my favorite wintertime baits and how to use them. But if you guys want to know anything else about wintertime smallmouth movements and the basics of fishing for smallmouth during the wintertime, hit me up down in the comment section down below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button or hit that button right there. It's going to subscribe you to the channel to let you know when I post more videos just like this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Take care of tight lines. God bless. Pursue your passion.